have vampires and you have hipsters and then you have vampire hipsters. Only lovers left alive. The thing about Only Lovers Left Alive is that it's not just about one relationship, it's about two relationships. The relationship between the two main vampires in the movie, Adam and Eve, and their relationship as vampires to humanity. That's what made the movie interesting for me, because it started, and for the first half hour, I'm like, Tom Hiddleston's Adam is the saddest fucking vampire that I've ever seen. I turned that frown upside down, Adam, cheer the fuck up, you're a vampire. But then Tilda Swinton or Eve drops in the movie and I really like their relationship in the sense that they are very much alike but they are at the same time very different. Adam is an artist, he creates things, he builds things but he's very morose and very depressed. Eve on the other hand is a fountain of information, she is not an artist, she doesn't really build things, she's not as creative as Adam, but she is the light to his darkness, she has a very carpet yam type of attitude, she's the yin to his yang, so at the same time they're very different but they're very much alike, just like a couple would be after a lot of time spent together, but they complement each other very very well. So the relationship is pretty straightforward, these two people basically live for each other, especially since they live in a world filled with people, and these guys fucking hate humans. If you don't like movies that look down on you and make you feel like an underachieving sack of shit that is wasting his potential on this earth, then you should definitely not watch this movie. For instance, Adam calls humans zombies, so just think about that, the undead is calling humans undead. And it's not the first time that we see vampires thinking not very fondly of humans, but it's not just that they think of us as cattle, and it's not just that they are superior to us. Adam hates mankind because he feels that humans are not living up to their potential. So for half the movie I have to deal with these two snobbish hipster vampires with their culture and their art and their inventions and their fancy post-rock music. But then Eve's sister Ava shows up, and she's more of the classical vampire that, you know, thinks of humans as happy meals with legs. But she's also a bitch, and I also cannot stand her. So I'm left there thinking, am I not supposed to like any of the vampires in this movie? But then the aha moment comes. Of course you're not supposed to like vampires, because despite what Anne Rice and Stephanie Meyer might want us to believe, vampires don't live for centuries upon centuries, so they can fall in love with a teenage girl and cherish her because of her humanity. It makes sense for Adam to hate humanity, he's been alive so long that he's seen humanity fail again and again and again. Say if you're in your 20s or 30s now and you're looking at teenagers today and you're thinking, fucking morons, we weren't this bad when we were their age, take that feeling and multiply it by a thousand and that's pretty much how Adam and Eve feel all the fucking time. Their disdain for humans. It's pretty much the most human thing about them. But it's not all gothic romance and social commentary because you do have a couple of scenes where the ordinary blends with the extraordinary for humorous results. But I do like the fact that the movie represented vampires as just citizens of the world. They don't really explain if they are magical creatures or something else and they take the sh time to show the systems that they have in place for dealing with certain things like how do they get their food, how do they act if some if one of them goes dark side? One of those movies that has a lot of layers, and on the first layer, the one of the story, the narrative, it may seem like not a lot is happening, but you have other layers under that, you know, you have a lot of symbols, you have not a lot of things that demand to be interpreted on a second viewing or a third viewing. Ultimately, it is a beautiful love story between two vampires that is nothing like the Twilight movies, but at the same time, you know, if you don't like pretentiousness, it is pretentious. But I personally think that Jim Jarmusch is one of those people that can make pretentious work. But it's not that they think of us as cattle, as a source of food, and it's not just a superior, superior, superiority, superiority.